Hey everyone, welcome to Founders 365 with me, Stephen Haggerty. Today I'm joined by the founder of Pixel Media, Camille Lurton, or in Irish, Hi. Lurton, or French, Lurton, however <laughs> we want to go with it today. How are you today, Camille? I'm good, thank you. How are you, Stephen? I'm very good. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, for I'm having me. No, more than welcome, more than welcome to be here. I'm excited to get on the story and the journey of you, <laughs> Pixel Media, how it's come about. Uh, so let's start off with just giving an explanation of, of what you guys do uh, and how you kind of came to be where you are today. But we'll obviously get into more detail about that as well. Okay. Um, so Pixel Media, so we're media. <laughs> pretty, Spoiler pretty alert. Obvious. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Um, so we're a media platform uh, which tailors um, uh, bite-sized content for brands on social media. Um, the the reason why I started Pixel was, so I have a, I have a background in, in production. I've been a producer uh, in the digital industry for a couple of years. Uh, and Back uh, a couple of years ago, I worked in Hong Kong. That's where I started Pixel first. Um, and I worked for um, an agency there. Um, and I just saw all those clients coming in with like, you know, very big budgets. And um, and I was like, okay, we're not really creating anything, just transcending. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're spending a lot of money and, and nobody really seeing what mm -hmm. we're creating. Um, so I just, I just got really frustrated with the way that uh, traditional um, video production was, you know, uh, being made. And with the rise of social media, especially in Asia, it's, it's a bit different from Europe. Um, I really felt there was a need for most cheaper video content production. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just made up, because I didn't really invent anything. I just reused a format that already exists, which is very simple. So we shoot everything in a studio on color backgrounds. Um, and it's usually interviews with like influencers, little games, quizzes. Uh, it's very, very simple. Uh, but because of that format, we can have about 10, between 10 and 20 people in a day. Um, so if you think about it, that's, that's a lot of videos in just yeah. a day. So it's very cost effective. So it's not extremely creative in terms of uh, just like visually, but in, the content is more real, it's more authentic, and uh, it's more straight to the point. And because we work with people that already have a, a big following base, then it's also a, biggest, a bigger uh, visibility afterwards for the brand and for us as well, because we share everything on our media as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amazing. The, the frustration part of that seems like a really common story for founders, especially of sort of media, <laughs> social it? media companies. <laughs> they always go, I was really frustrated when I was working in XYZ, so I decided mm -hmm. to do something different. Why do you think that is such a common problem? Uh, especially with, I guess, creatives, you know, you look at situations very creatively. Mm -hmm. Why do you think there's such a common problem of, of feeling frustrated that, I guess, you can't be, perhaps you can't be uh, living up to your f full potential within the workspace? Yeah, I think it's a bit of both. I think it's it's you personally not being able to really um, live up to your full potential and really, because what happened to me is I, I felt like I kept hurting a wall whenever I brought up ideas. Also, I, I worked in Asia and I'm, I'm quite young, I'm, I'm 29, but back then when I started, it was, when I started Pixel, I was 27. So I was about 26 when I really was, you know, getting okay at my job and I really was bringing all those ideas and everybody was like, just, eh, just you know, you're, 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 you're just young. You just, just don't give really it time. know. Just give it time. So I think it's a bit of that. I think it's a bit of that. And I, and I understand like being also like humble and not being, you know, I don't obviously don't know everything, but if you, I really wanted to try this out and nobody wanted to take a chance on me. So I was like, okay, if you don't, if you're not going to take a chance on me, I'll take a chance on myself. And I think it's also, it's just, it's, I think it's that frustration, but also I think just not seeing change happening because I think because that's what you know entrepreneurs are for. Like we are bringing change, right? We mm -hmm. are uh, bringing solutions to problems that are already existing. And if you're if you can't do it in a structure that already exists, then you kind of have to come up with your own. Yeah. Um, I never thought I would do it at 27, but it just <laughs> happened. <laughs> I mean, have so, you all have you always had that entrepreneurial itch? Is this like in your childhood? W were your parents entrepreneurs? Have you been surrounded yeah. by it? So my so my my dad is an entrepreneur, but it's a little different because my so my I come from a, big, a really big wine family, very original for a French person from Bordeaux. But um, but my dad, so my dad is also <laughs> I know right, so just yeah, very stereotypical. Obviously. Yeah, Damn. obviously uh, <laughs> we live in Bordeaux. We have to have a wine company. 
<laughs> but my dad, my dad kind of wanted to detach from um, the whole family business. So he created his own and, and he's actually a really big entrepreneur when it comes to wine. Like he did invent a couple of things and uh, it was one of the first one to import uh, vines from France and implant them in Chile and Argentina. So we, I've always, I've always like followed someone who's always worked day and night and has always yeah. been so passionate about his job. So I think I think I kind of had that. And also I traveled a lot. I was really lucky as a kid. I traveled so much. So I think just having that taste of, you know, hard work and, and open mindedness, I think it really helped. But I never really thought about it. I think I was just like I was when I started actually when I was in high school, I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a surgeon. Um, that went really well, obviously, because yeah. I'm really a producer now. Uh, same thing, but, uh, pretty much, you know. Pretty much the same thing. Uh, but I think it's just got my path just kind of just like moved another way, and I was like, I'll just, yeah. I'll just, I'll just, just go along it. and see. And it worked out, and then it just, it kind of like worked out. I never really thought I was going to be an entrepreneur, but I would say at least two years before starting Pixel, I kind of was like, okay, I need to start my own thing. I really yeah. need to start my own thing. But I think unless you really have that moment where you, you know. That you're going to start something or you really have that idea and you're going to go with it and then you have the time and the resources do you, then that's do you remember starts. do you remember that specific moment within that two-year period of going oh, i want to start something to mm -hmm. actually starting something yeah um i think about a year and a half before because i've always thought like there's no way you're going to start on your own like you can't do this on your own so i've First, like I think a year before, a year and a half before Pixel, I started. I tried to start just a, a, a main production company with two of my friends, but it was kind of like we're like I'm like yeah, we're starting something, but we never really did anything. Too casual. Uh, but then I was quite working on it. And I was like, let's do this, guys. And then the two other ones were like, ah, fuck it. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're kicking like, themselves like, now. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think it was just the wrong timing, and uh, also Hong Kong back then. It's just. Um, uh, Hong Kong is just, it's just a lot when it comes to work and visas and all that. So I, I can mm -hmm. uh, understand it was not easy for everybody to do that. Um, so I kind of just let it go. And then, but I, I, it just, it just stuck to my brain. I was like, okay, I kind of really want to do my own thing now. Uh, but actually, the itch had begun. Uh, yes, exactly. I think it's like the moment you like kind of step into it. Yeah. Then it's just, uh, then yeah, yeah, you're screwed. You just have to go with it. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not everything. It's, the moment you stop. decide it, everything you look at, you look at it in a in a way that you could think, yeah. oh, can I do something with that? Can I? Can that yeah. be my next thing? So I always admire people who like who, whose company doesn't work out, and then they go back to the real world, and then they have to get, get a world. job. <gasps> How do they do that? I just, no, I, I don't think it's, it's good. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I would last twenty four. Well. I, I would last 24 hours in a job, but yeah, I would my, last like 72 hours. <laughs> I think my soul would probably start getting destroyed within three days. Probably, I think that's yeah. when I would, especially if I, if it was, you know, pre 2020 and I had to commute, I think, <laughs> you know, getting on a tube right now, 8am or something is, is my worst nightmare. I think <laughs> for you, when you launch pixel, then when that moment, you know, when you went live and it was your, your creation and, and your, kind of opportunity to grow something and like make that dent in the world mm -hmm. how how was the how were the first couple of months into that what were the most challenging parts that you found that perhaps you didn't expect when growing the business um well so when i launched i was working full-time also uh smart. so i would so <laughs> a smart yeah but Damn, Smart, although really, uh, then you're working way more hours in the day. Yeah, I was working because um, video production um, and editing takes so much time. So I was I was working from like nine to six or seven and then going home and then I think working an extra four to five hours, at least three, four times a week, plus mm -hmm. every three weeks shooting also as well over the weekend. So I didn't have much time socially, which is something I kind of expected. Like I knew that it's like, obviously, you know that you're going to have to like work otherwise. Sort of like pre-framed in your head going right <laughs> yeah. For the first that couple of months, I'm not going to have much social life, and yeah. that's okay. No, that that I knew, and I was fine with it. And actually, you, you're kind of like on a high the first couple of months, so you're like, yeah, whatever. It's just, but I, but I think my, and I was actually impressed at how much my brain could take in. Honestly, <laughs> I was like, seriously. Well, wow. is this, was this like the first time you pushed yourself with your own full-on project that is like your yeah. responsibility solely? Yeah, it's very stimulating as well. So you're like, mm. oh, amazing. Um, I think what. I think there were a couple of things that I wasn't expecting. First was the not the lack of support, but I did get a lot of um, of uh, not very nice comments from from people that were close to me. Wow! And I was like, okay, as in, as in friends and family or colleagues? Yeah, well, all, all, all both, of both. everyone. Wow! How did you handle <laughs> yeah, that? Some people, 
um, I kind of, well, at the beginning, I was kind of taking it really personally because it wasn't really mean comments, but people just felt like they had the opportunity to say something or they mm. had the opportunity to judge or to give their opinion and I didn't ask for their opinion. Yeah. Uh, and, and also, I guess a... I think we, when people do something on a project, like when you launch a new project for yourself, mm -hmm. there's almost like this fairy tale illusion that everyone's going to be clapping you, everyone's going to be supporting you. <laughs> so. Or like almost like you know the last bit of a marathon everyone's celebrating you but sometimes yeah. it's not like that yeah and that's one thing i, I didn't think uh would be so hard is first of all it's very lonely because i found it in on my own it's super mm. lonely it's really hard because like i've got tons of friends but it's really hard to and to talk to someone who doesn't do the same thing because like no matter how supportive they are they don't do the same thing so they just don't understand uh and it's like it, it sometimes they think i'm bipolar it's like one day i wake up i'm like yes and the next day i'm like oh so it's uh it's a little hard for them so that is like it's very lonely and when it comes to yeah when it comes to criticism i was not expecting it from people so close to me yeah mm -hmm. i had people just that felt free to say things that they just shouldn't have i'm like i didn't ask for your opinion thank you for it but i just yeah. didn't ask for it so at the beginning i was kind of like take it, taking it personally and i was like oh my god i'm doing it i'm doing it wrong and also i'm on social media so everything is visible and it's just it was a bit of a nightmare at the beginning i was like i was trying to sort out my head and my branding and while doing everything else and everybody was just commenting on everything and giving me ideas and stuff and i was like i don't know um and then i was like you know what like just stick to like what you think and just yeah. have a, a small group of people that you think are that you trust and you know who really know your vision and then you can ask them because obviously you need people to help you out and mm -hmm. like uh, give their opinion and feedback but just yeah, you, cre you create the boundaries. Else, yeah, and whatever else is feed it's a, it's just unnecessary feedback, and yeah. but so you have to listen. I think it's like it's like this fine line between you have to listen to people, but at the same time you gotta trust your gut. Mm. But you just get used to it. And but how did how did you teach yourself that? How did you go from taking it really personally, and obviously to... taking it really personally probably affects those days when you're like, oh my god, everything's going wrong, when actually it probably mm -hmm. wasn't. To making that switch in your head where you go right actually you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna have this this support network that i'm gonna lean on and they're gonna be the one that i trust uh, and i speak to and everyone else can just kind of bugger off basically <laughs> um i think you a um, couple different ways first i i went to see a therapist um because i thought like just to deal with like all the anxiety and stuff like that and just like i think also i think women we also lack confidence in, in so many so many different ways and i think i needed that boost and that help mm -hmm. with that so i think that helped in a way uh and also i think really slowly picking the people that that really mattered in the the, um, the decision process and and i think just having these people and that support i think it, it made me realize that what they were saying what was fair and true um uh, whereas the other ones i mean it was just noise yeah. um i think it's more it's, it's a mix of like slowly trusting yourself and seeing also just seeing the results i got clients really quickly as well so i was like oh well i guess it's working then <laughs> yeah so you're saying it's not work it's not working or it's, it's whatever but I, apparently i mean it is since i've got yeah results. they can't and see it, behind the scenes and right, you know, they're yeah. seeing a very 2d vision yeah of, and of it's also just happening. like kind of like calming yourself it's like you know like it's not everything was built in a day just take your time you have time like pixel what pixel looks like today did not look like it like a year and yeah, a half but... ago and it's normal it just it has to improve and i think it's just slowly teaching you that it's like it's going to improve mm. you're on your own you only have a set of skills and you only have this much of money it's going to change you know later on it's fine step by step it's hard it sounds great now but it's hard <laughs> you just hang in there if you if you look back now over the last year, year and a half two years what's one of those lessons that you've learned that has completely surprised you that you thought you would that you never even thought you would learn um i think just trusting myself more um that's a and, great one in itself yeah i think i think i think it all comes to because it all comes down to that because there were so many things that i did not because i came into this as a producer and i was 27 i, I graduated from school i think i was 24 mm -hmm. yeah so i didn't work for a long time before i went on my own so i didn't know anything like i had never managed anybody uh all, all the all, all that i've done was like pretty creative and stuff but like i i, I didn't even know legally how to start a business i didn't even know how to like find a client like i just had no idea and i think just just trusting myself more and more because at the beginning I was just panicking about everything. I was like, this is so not going to work. I have no idea what I'm doing. Nobody's going to take me seriously. Uh, and then just slowly really just being like, you know what? 
you, you, you were panicking last month about this, but look at this today. You've got, you've yeah. got a client, your structure is here. You figured it out. Google's my best friend. Uh, and it's just, it's just working. And whenever, and now I'm kind of like in this mindset where I'm like, if I don't know how I'm going to do this, I'm just going to figure it out. I figured it out this far. <laughs> I've been winging it for like a year and a half and I'm here. So but th that, I think that's one of the, those secrets that only once you've been in it, you find out that pretty much everyone's winging it to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, well, you have to. You're you're pretty much creating a path that nobody has been walking. So yeah. you kind of have to. I mean, the key point is, is like you said, you batch yourself. Uh, and yeah. I think that is one trait that pretty much every entrepreneur that I've ever met has. It's they back themselves and they've got the confidence within themselves to give something a try. And this is where yeah, the exactly. entrepreneurial world stems from. It's like, we just look at things and go, hey, why not give that a try? Why not? Rather... You know, if, whereas a lot of people and this is where criticism comes in and be like, why would you give that a try? And it's mm -hmm. only the craziness of an entrepreneurial mind that we go, hey, yeah, we're, you know, we'll give up a really cushy job and, and for yeah. that to, to work 100 hours a week, which is a very interesting scope in itself. <laughs> so yeah, it's like it's pretty much torture yeah yeah exactly and especially for those first couple of months like you said you know it's you, you you're not seeing your friends you're not having much of a social life and mm. you know you had you had the full-time job at the start as well how did it feel when you thought when you were at that stage where you went wow i can i can kind of do this full time i can actually put my fully full self into pixel and you know what you've achieved part not part-time but you know what i mean mm -hmm versus what you can achieve now you've got you made that leap yeah so that leap was actually um well because obviously when you when you go full-time for your company you need you need to have the financial resources right <laughs> That's just it helps number one yeah um and i wasn't to the point where pixel was uh financially sustainable but i had money on my own and i was like you know what if if you put together what you have and then get a loan and then just keep getting clients in you, you can do it again yeah. winging it as i go um you did the basic math and you were like yeah, it kind exactly. of adds like, up one plus one eh, yeah let's go. um but it, it was more like it was more just for my own sanity i just got to a point where like i just couldn't do both anymore it wasn't it wasn't so much more that i could do one or the other which is it, it, you're not going to be able to do both so you got to choose now it's either your own business you take a chance on that or you keep staying at that job that you hate. And then it, it's just, it's either one or the other. Sounds so... like it was a really tricky decision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the company that I've built and I love and I can really see my future in or work for some company that I really don't enjoy. And it's probably killing myself. <laughs> tricky one. Tricky yeah. One. It, it sounds fun now, but like back then it's like, cause I, I was in Hong Kong. So I, it meant visas also because my visa was mm -hmm. attached to that job. So I was like, the moment you leave that, it's not just financial comfort. It's just you've got, got you. no salary, you've got no visa, uh, <laughs> and you're leaving one of the the uh, the, the most. How, how the long did now. you How long did you stay in Hong Kong for then um, until you came back to London? Six months. <laughs> Six months. And was that because of, was that <laughs> was that the visa issue? Uh, no, I think it was it was a bit of everything. It was visa. No, because I still had a visa for a year, so I was actually all right. Uh, but it was more uh, financial. It's just because mm -hmm. it cost so much to live there. I was like, it makes no point staying yeah, here while well, I can no do sense. this from anywhere else. Um, and I think it was also, oh yeah, well, it, was right, it was right when all the political issues were rising in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. uh, and because my, my media is based on social media, I was like, uh, what's going to happen if China decides to cut Instagram? Yeah. Uh, so let's have a plan B. And so I moved here, yeah. And it just it just made much more sense, like financially, and just like even just like for me personally, it made more sense, yeah. And why London? Why, why London? Um, so London because I wanted to be in Europe. Also, it needed to make sense in terms of the in terms of the market. So it needed mm -hmm. to make sense for me personally because I obviously like my business is kind of it's me. So I need to be comfortable where I am. Um, but it also needs to make sense in terms of the business. And London has a direct link to Hong Kong. Uh, and that's where the market made more sense. So I just, yeah. I just moved it here. I, again, I, I kind of took a chance. Um, and, and it was right before COVID. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Great, worst, place, yeah. worst places to be. Uh, <laughs> for, you, for you as a founder, you mentioned it earlier, or we spoke about it earlier in terms of that support network. How have you found that support network now as one, being a founder, two, like you said, being a fairly young founder, but actually you're not really young in terms of if you look at the scope of founders, um but also being a female founder because this is one of the things that comes up when i talk to female founders a lot is 
there seems to be a, a huge there seems to be a big support but then also a lack of support as well at the same time yeah. um from what i can see it's almost like there's these there's these like secret clubs for female founders that are really great once you're in them but what but people can't really find them to get them in them if that makes sense yeah it's true um i've only just very recently uh started to be part of those support groups so back in hong kong i had just a few friends here and there who were also entrepreneurs or also i've had uh clients also who came in they were my age and then we we turned out you know to become becoming friends and stuff like that but i think now that i've been in in london i've been slowly meeting people here and there and we're and they are like they are groups and stuff i don't know i've never been a huge fan of like well, first of all, now it's kind of hard because you can't really meet anybody in person. Yeah. So for me, just just randomly going on to a Zoom meeting with a bunch of people is not my thing. Um, yeah, it's, a bit a, it's a little bit awkward. So I'd rather meet people in person or um, through other people, you know, like smaller groups. Uh, I'm not a big fan of like big, big, big support groups, although there 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 are plenty of resources in those mm-hmm. groups. So it's great. Um, I think it's it's a little hard. When I arrived here, I was part of the wing, which is the uh, the all female. Um, um, co-working space which mm-hmm. closed now uh, which was great because then you had the chats and you could chat to anybody just meet them in the office and I really like that structure because you could work from there and then have that but it is selective you you, you do get selected before going in there so it's yeah. like you do get that but then you have to be chosen to be in there and I'm like well I mean I'm already It'll... working so hard like it would be great if I could just get in there yeah <laughs> it still, though. like it's just but the, the trouble with the trouble with situations like that and it's not just obviously female founders it's across the board that mm-hmm. the people that need the support most are often the ones that aren't allowed in those groups until a certain yeah. point in their business which is a real shame mm-hmm. um one thing that i i've seen in the in the marketplace is the fact that there's there's no one there's no one size fits all and that's kind of what you're saying you know you, yeah. you're not a big fan of the zoom calls which uh, lots of people aren't but you've really got to find what support network meets you. I'm curious to know from your side, because in the early days you had that un- unexpected uh, sort of lack of support, mm-hmm. Did you? Did, was it hard for you to figure out what you needed or what you wanted in terms of maybe that trust aspect when you found, when you did just go, you know what, I, I would like to create that support bubble now? Um, I kind of just... I kind of just went with it on my own. Yeah. <laughs> You're just a goer. You're just like, I'm just going to yeah, do it. Just I'm going like, to see what's going yeah, to happen. Like, if, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. It wasn't easy. Like it's been very, very lonely. Uh, and, but I've always had like one or two people that I could go to for yeah. help or resources. And the thing is like, I'm kind of like the kind of person it's like, if nobody's going to give me an answer, I'll just find it myself. I, I just don't like waiting for someone to be like, Oh, but like I'm, I'm always open to asking. Uh, but I just hate waiting, and I yeah. just hate just like patiently waiting. So if I, if someone can't help me with this, I'm just gonna, you know what? I'll just figure it out. Uh, so that's why it gets even more lonely because most of the time I kind of like I'm just gonna figure it out on my own. Um, it's yeah, it's it's not it's not really been easy to be honest. But yeah, I've done a lot on my own. Yeah. Good, and you and you're doing well. This is the main point. You you, you know you 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 figured it out right because a lot of people you have that choice, don't you? You can either you can either do it on your own or you can get almost get lost in the noise of trying to find what you're looking for and yeah. people spend a lot of time find trying to find what they're looking for and actually they yeah. sometimes you kind of need to, to try it on your own go for it and then through doing that you actually naturally mm-hmm. find the support you need anyway but but it's good I think I know a lot of, I think it's all it's also a few mistakes that I've made like I should have asked maybe more people but because I don't have that patience and I'm just kind of <laughs> like I'm just going to do it on my own yeah. uh sometimes it would have been better if I asked somebody uh, but the thing is like, you can do both. You can ask and you can also do it on your own. Like yeah. if, if I'm able to do everything, I don't see what, what anybody else would, wouldn't be able to do it as well. It's just, you do have a lot of resources just online. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just, you just gotta do a lot of research and you gotta be really curious and then, yeah, just like meeting people and talking to them. And then, yeah. What, what, what are the, uh, what's the family conversation like? Because you mentioned your dad is a, a wine entrepreneur, a quite a traditional business. Um, mm-hmm. and then there's you with the, very new social media type business do they understand it do they get it do they support you no <laughs> so, no uh, uh, they have no idea what i do and as far as they know i still work in hong kong yeah exactly it's, it's you're almost right there uh, no, my, 
<laughs> then my dad's, uh, like my, my dad is like, my brother has always been like quite in love with his work, let's say. So it wasn't really, um, uh, really. Has he realized that you've moved out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <he's, laughs> I'm like... not sure. I'm not sure. Um, but like he, he kind of gets the sense because like he tried to, that's why it's really funny. He tried to hire me for something last year. Um, uh, and then he kind of like threw me and he, like he, th- he threw an email at me with like uh, his marketing uh, director in there. And I was like, you guys have no idea what I do, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> and this poor guy, this poor guy was in the middle of the emails like, wait, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting this. Like, you, you can't do this. I'm like, no, that's not what I do. So I had to like re-explain to my father and then this guy. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like, I, it's just it's really awkward, but like, I, can, yeah. I don't do this. Um, and my mom, it's uh, my mom. She now has her own company. She just bought a, a company recently. Um, so now she can understand it. But when I started, uh, she she kept calling it a project. She's like, "So how's your project going?" Yeah. I'm like, "You mean my company?" It's like, "Yeah, your project." I'm like, "It's a company, mom. Yeah. Company. It's a business." Yeah. So when when the project ends, what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, that She's sort like, of thing. But I don't understand. Like, where where is the money? I'm like, that's not how we. I mean, that's yeah. how it works. But like, it, it takes a bit longer than that. It's it's when you then go. Actually, you know, we 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 take part payment in crypto, and you know, you've lost them. You've lost them. There. <laughs> and then she's like. What? <laughs> yeah, it's just it's no, just I a don't digital really currency. Talk about it too much in my family, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting one where you have a very entrepreneurial family, and it's very it's a very common thing with entrepreneurs that they've usually grown up or or been around someone in their family that has has had businesses or or, or mm-hmm. runs business in the day, so it's quite a natural progress. For you, then, I mean, obviously, twenty twenty is a bit of a strange year, like we said, but no. for you. No, really, I, I don't know. I, I, what do you mean? I've, I've, I've blinked and it's Christmas again, so it's, it feels <laughs> weird. But what's next for Pixel Media? Obviously, you've still got that London Hong Kong connection. Mm-hmm. But what's next for you guys as an as an agency and sort of the projects that you want to move on to and grow into in the next phase? Uh, well, first of all, we were supposed to launch the, so we have, a, the media is in Hong Kong, it's been launched for a while now, and it's growing, but we were going to launch it here as well, uh, which was supposed to be in April last year, I mean, this year, April this year, so, COVID, right. Uh, <laughs> I love the, I love, all we need to do now, just COVID. That's yeah, just, it's like, and the, that's it. you, know, you don't even have to explain it, it's like, in COVID. Yeah. Uh, so we're pushing it to um, April next year. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Touch wood. Um, but but in order to do that, we need to be able to shoot, and that means we need to mix households. So I don't know how that's gonna go. But slowly, I think January we're gonna start shooting and see how that's gonna go. And then we got a couple of um, we've got like a, this like documentary series that's gonna come out in Hong Kong. Where it's more like much more artistic than what we've done uh, so far. So this is gonna come out, and I think uh, June next year. And I'm also working on looking for investors so we can grow. Uh, and hopefully like in a year or so just open it somewhere else also in um, in Europe so very exciting yeah. hopefully big COVID is done by then <laughs> 20, big 2021 I should say not 2020 20, yeah, that, that's how weird this year has been I've just forgotten that we're already in 2020 <laughs> what year is this again can we just redo it we'll just reset the year and do do yeah, this year all again great. and uh, everyone will be fine and it'll be great yeah. uh, I, I guess one of my final questions for you is looking back on you, you, the journey so far what's bit what's one of the takeaways that you think would be really useful if you had maybe a a 27 year old 27 year old you sat in front of you now what would you be saying to them to help them in that journey um i think i would have said first of all trust yourself because it's all going to work out um and second of all hire an accountant yeah <laughs> yeah i learned that one yeah <laughs> But like enjoying because you always think in the first jobs that you need to hire like someone to help you with your. I mean, branding is important, but like social media and business and stuff. And I was like, "You're wrong." <laughs> Get the back you end so stuff wrong. sorted. <laughs> you know, make sure the admin side of stuff. Yeah, because that's the stuff. that's the most stressful yeah. bit as well. Yeah, and and also it's like it's not as because business. I mean, obviously it's a skill as well, but that's something you can kind of learn. And then also it's your mm-hmm. business, so like you know that. Uh, but I mean, legal stuff, you can't exactly just wing it. So, <laughs> or no. like number stuff either. So, if you're terrible with numbers, you're not going to wing it. So, and you're it, an and it's also the least enjoyable part. And yeah, it's often it's something at the start that takes up yeah. a lot of time. And, and you don't and... do also sometimes. I procrastinate when it comes to numbers. I'm like, ah. Yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> and then I just, yeah, then I pay for the mistake, yeah. Exactly. Uh, we've, I think I every do. entrepreneur has been there in some part, some mm-hmm. form or another, uh, which yeah. is really exciting. But Camille, I mean, my final, final question for you then is, 
how can people find out more about you? How can people follow the Pixel journey and uh, find out more about Pixel? Uh, well, we are mainly on Instagram, so you can go on Instagram. It's at pixel.hk. That's our um, that's our Hong Kong media, and on LinkedIn as well. We're on LinkedIn as well, Pixel Hong Kong. Um, and yeah, and you can follow me also on Instagram, uh, Camille Lurton. I think I don't even know what my handle is, but <laughs> so good luck you're finding not me. You're not meant to say that. You're not meant to say that. You're meant to know it. <laughs> but yeah, and we have a, we have a website, but nobody goes on that. So yeah. <laughs> that, I'm not I'm not sure if that was one of the the best. <laughs> ways to se- to sell yourself stuff but <laughs> okay it let's works. redo this all right find us on instagram at pixel.hk there we go that's yeah. it that's all you need to do people Don't go, on go on there, our website. get in touch <laughs> follow the journey and uh, you're doing some really cool stuff I, re- I i had a little scroll the other day and uh, i think it looks oh, yeah. amazing Aww. yeah great thank you so well done. Awesome. camille thank you so much for being on founders 365 oh, thank you that was great thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, I wish you all the best of luck, and I cannot wait to see you expand in a, in next in twenty twenty one and beyond. <laughs> Let's redo this in twenty twenty one. Yeah, we we we'll redo it, it and uh, <laughs> we'll get you on for season two, where we're going to be doing like round tables, and Perfect. that'll be amazing. Let's do that. Let's look still there. <laughs> thanks, Will, and thanks everyone else for listening and watching. This has been Founders three six five.